Hello everybody, great to see you back here on the channel. Well, as you can see, I'm back out here on the farm and it just seems only like yesterday I was out here shooting my, well, one of my last videos, but I'm shooting more videos here. Hey, I spend a lot of time at this place and why wouldn't you have a look at this? It is absolutely beautiful weather. We've had gorgeous night skies here all week expecting more for the next couple of nights as well. So I've been busy, and today I wanna to show you another time-lapse video. This one's a little bit different in that I'm going to also show you some of the editing I do. I've had a lot of people ask me about how do you edit your time-lapse videos? Well, it's not rocket science, it's pretty basic, but I'm going to show you later on. So last night I shot two time-lapses here on the farm, and I'm just gonna run you through the setups that I use and briefly go through that, then we'll have a look at the edits. So, first thing first, I'll show you the gear that I used to shoot last night. All right, now I must admit, I am a bit of a glutton for punishment. Uh, I like motion time-lapse. Motion time-lapse is where the camera is actually moving in some way to give a little bit more dynamic movement through the scene. Now, when you're shooting Nightscape Astro, landscape uh, time lapses, the stars are moving obviously through a period of time and that is a level of movement. Also you'll sometimes you'll get clouds which move through the scene. That's another level of movement but I do like to have something else and as you can see here I've got my Zepon Micro 3 slider which has this beautiful track so you can move the camera to and fro and it's done via a motor with a battery and that works really well. Now one thing I want to draw your attention to here, I've got my Nikon, one of my Nikon Z6 cameras, but it's got the Sony 20mm f1.8 G lens on it via the Megadap adapter. So it adapts the Sony lens to a Nikon body and this works terrifically well. Now you're probably going to ask me, why wouldn't I use my Nikon Z 20mm f1.8 to do this? Well, guess what? I was using that somewhere else. I was shooting something uh, with that lens and it really just gives me the flexibility to have two 20 millimeter focal length lenses to use whenever and wherever I want. So anyway, this is what I used. I made my way up to the dam where you've seen me do time lapses before and I could not resist myself. I made my way over to the hay rake which is sitting on the edge of the dam. Now I know I've shot this many many times and I've featured it in many many videos but I just couldn't resist because I love that subject and to be honest with you I've been thinking to myself I'm going to shoot a slider time lapse there for a long time but I haven't got around to it because I wanted to see the movement along the various tines of the hay rake. So I set up my slider. I was going to be shooting for approximately three and a quarter hours. So I wanted it to slide across in that time. I set it using my standard method for most of my time lapses that I shoot these days, whereby I'm using the internal intervalometer in the camera to do the time lapse, and I'm setting the movement on the slider totally separately from that. So the slider is not uh, triggering the camera. So I've talked about this in the past, it works really well. So I shot that uh, wide open at f1.8. I wanted that bokery out of focus look in the background, which I was getting quite nicely. And with the 20mm f1.8 lens, just set it to f1.8, focus onto the foreground, which was only about a metre and a half away from the camera. And that will throw anything in the background out of focus nicely. That's the effect I was looking for. So I programmed that. I set up a one of these Ulanzi VL49 video lights, which on a low level is all that's required to light this whole scene. Just one little light on its lowest setting. Um, now I had the color temperature set to about 4800 Kelvin. Now you can set the color temperature on these lights, which is a great asset because Sometimes uh, when you're using various lights, they're just a bit too blue or maybe a bit too orange. So in this case, I can adjust that. And that's great. So I left that running there, came back. Now you might think, okay, what did I do? I come back and had a coffee, put my feet up. Well, sort of, but I had something else in mind. So I decided I was going to shoot another time-lapse. 
So I'll show you what I used to shoot that one. So for my second time lapse, I decided to shoot another very popular subject here on the farm, and that is the hay shed down the back there. Now, again, I wanted to apply a little bit of motion to that time lapse. So I used my uh, Zeppon Pons system. So this is a pan and tilt system. And you know what? I really love using this system because it's really portable, compact, easy to set up. Uh, it's much easier to level up than the slider is. It's probably something I would use more than the slider, to be absolutely honest. But anyway, I use my Nikon Z6 with the 14 to 24 f 2.8 lens on this. I set that lens to 16 millimeters. Now you probably ask, well, why would I choose 16 millimeters? And you know what? I thought long and hard because when I zoom through the various zoom ranges of that lens, I looked through the viewfinder and thought, okay, what's the difference? Uh, 14 is obviously very wide, 24 is obviously not so wide. I rarely shoot that lens at 24 mil. Uh, I thought to myself, well, why bother shooting it at 20 mil? I've got a heap of 20 mil lenses, so I chose 16. Now, when you're shooting time lapse, there's always a crop involved because it's going to become a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. These cameras are all set up to be shooting at 3 by 2 aspect ratio, which is much squarer. So you lose some of the top and some of the bottom. Anyway, I chose 16. I decided I would pan around from right to left and see the Milky Way galactic core rising at the end of the shed. And as that Milky Way galactic core rises up into the sky, the tilt on this system is going to follow it up a little bit. So that's what I decided to do. And I was going to shoot about 510, 520 shots. Um, and that was going to go over a period of about four hours. How do you work out how long to shoot time lapses for? Well, ultimately it comes down to how long you want the time lapse to be, but also I'm factoring in the movement. Now, because once again, I'm using the inbuilt intervalometer on my Z6 system, and I'm not connecting it in any way with any cables or anything to this system. The two are operating independently. So I can't have this moving too quickly, otherwise I might get blur in my photos because a lot of you ask me about blur with the longer shutter speeds. I was shooting these at 15 second shutter speed. So uh, the other one I was shooting at 10 second shutter speed because that was a uh, wider aperture. So I was able to uh, lessen the shutter speed. This one, 15 seconds, I had a 20 second interval. So basically I'm shooting at an uh, image of 15 seconds, then a five second gap, and then it shoots the next one. Uh, I shot that at ISO uh, 4000, I think it was, at F 2.8, which is wide open on that lens. Now, it was really cold out there last night. So I had a number of accessories with me. Um, battery pack lens warmers. You can see here hanging down underneath the camera, I've got this little bag. And that's something I use all the time. So that lens warmer battery, fits in there, something like this. And I also had the same power pack powering my camera because the, the Z6 Mark II cameras can be powered by USB. That is a lifesaver. It means you can shoot for hours and hours and hours without having to worry about battery life. So anyway, I set that up, got it moving nice and slowly and slightly up to follow the Milky Way Galactico. And then, yes, I came back inside for a cuppa and relaxed. In fact, by the time I got this one set up, I actually went to bed and set the alarm to get up again to go back and have a look and see how it turned out. Now, I forgot to mention with this, I used three of my Z96 video lights to light that scene of the shed because I needed to, to sort of spread the light around a fairly large area. Basically, this is low level lighting. Had the lights on a low amount set it up and left it. Now these things with the larger NPF Sony batteries, they just last all night. There's never a problem. I, I don't think I can ever remember having one of these run out of power. But anyway, they turned out really well. And I'll actually show you both time lapses here right now. And then I'm going to go through the editing of probably one of these time lapses and we'll just see how that all pans out.
So at the beginning, we start in Lightroom. I've imported all of my files into Lightroom and you can see them here. Now I've already done the edits just to speed this video up, but essentially what I did, I clicked on the first image and changed a few parameters. You can see them here. I've added a little bit of exposure and contrast, dropped the highlights, added some whites, added a bit of a dehaze, plus 33 there. And I've also done some noise reduction which is the standard noise reduction on Lightroom, not the new denoise one. I've added th plus 30 luminance, plus 30 contrast, plus 50 color, and I have done lens profile corrections, as you can see down here. The other thing I did was go into the crop tool, and I unlocked this padlock here, and that gives you the option to change the aspect ratio, which I did to 16 by nine. You can see the crop. So I'm always thinking of this in the stage when I'm shooting because I'm gonna crop off some of the top and I'm gonna be cropping off some of the bottom. And you say, well, why do I crop to 16 by nine? It's because that's the shape television screens are, it's the shape computer screens are. I want these time lapses to show full screen on whatever device that we're looking at. Same with mobile phones. They're, they're pretty much all 16 by nine screen size these days. And from here, I click Control A to select all of the images, go to sync down here, ask me what I want to sync, I click check all and press synchronize. And from there it copies all of those settings all the way over to each of these 500 images. And you can see there, there's a lot of images that have been um, uh, changed to the settings that I've chosen. And then when that's done, I just go up to file, export. Now, this opens up a dialog box. Now, normally this will go to hard drive and I'll be going to a file uh, somewhere that's already on my hard drive. But in this case, I wanna to go to LR Timelapse to export. Now, LR Timelapse is a plugin to Lightroom which is designed to create time-lapse sequences. And you can see there, I've got some preset parameters that's the same for all the files. Uh, it's 4K file and it's, it's already got a folder set there where it will send a edited selection of JPEG images to be the sequence that LR time-lapse renders into a 4K video. So all I do is press export and off we go. And that takes a little while to do, but it is well worth it in the end. So you can see here that Lightroom has sent all of those images over to LR time-lapse. And it's just simply asking me now to press the render video button down the bottom, which I will do. All the settings are already enabled here and it knows exactly what to do with this file. Once again, we just have to wait for that to finish. And now you can see that LR time-lapse has created a folder here with all the separate images rendered out, which is what it made the time-lapse out of. You can see them all there and the video itself is here on the end of this stack of other videos which I have done. I'll just show you what that looks like now, rendered out, and there it is playing. So uh, that looks fantastic, as you can see, nice, beautiful, smooth movement across the frame. You can see the lights in the background, a bit of cloud cover, a few aeroplanes going through, and this is why I love time lapses so much. They are just so beautiful to look at. Now you can see I've done exactly the same thing with the shared time lapse with the pan and tilt head. I've edited this first image here with my settings. I've dropped the highlights, added some whites, added a bit of shadow detail into this one, which I don't often do, but I did this time because I felt like it did need a little bit of some oomph in that foreground. I've also added some dehaze. Now this is not a mask. This is across the whole frame because if I do too many masks on these, time-lapse renders, it takes an awful long time to render out uh, 500 odd images. And I've done my standard uh, corrections with lens profile corrections and noise reduction, which is pretty much what I do in all of my images. Once again, I just press Control A to select all of the images, click on sync and check all and then synchronize. And all of these images will now be synchronized. It takes a while for this to happen. It's got to copy and paste all of those settings across these 510 images which is in this particular sequence 
and I'll be rendering these out exactly the same way as I did the other one and that's how I do my time-lapse editing. Well there you go, that's our time-lapse video done and dusted from start to finish. So I hope you got something out of that. I really appreciate the fact that you come along, support the channel here, join me out here at this magnificent location. And I've got another one coming soon from here, so stay tuned for that. All right, well, I'll look forward to seeing you guys very shortly. So have a fantastic week. I'll see you later.